Hello everyone. Today we will be looking into how to create a material that simulates the vertex jittering or snapping seen in old PlayStation 1 games. For quick reference, vertex snapping occurred due to PlayStation 1 hardware limitations where the vertex locations could not use float numbered positions, that is vertices could only move between whole numbers with no decimals so that when the camera moves vertices can be seen snapping in between its closest full number positions as can be seen here each point in the grid can represent a location that a vertex can be on not in between we will create a material that simulates this limitation as well as the ability to make the squares of the grid larger creating more visible snapping or smaller making it less visible so Let's get started. All right, so the first thing we will want to do is to create a material parameter collection. You can find it under the material category right here. And then we will call this MPC underscore global params. Uh, double click this and inside here, we will create a new scalar parameter. Uh, we can name it grid size and set the default value to one. So after that, we want to create a material function next and we will call that MF underscore vertex app. Uh, double click this and we will start setting up the function. Uh, first off, you will want a, a world positioning node. And we will change the shader offsets uh, to camera relative world position, including material shader offsets. Then we want to go ahead and create a collection parameter node. And we will choose the collection that we created earlier, the MPC global param ones. And then we want to select the parameter name, which will be the grid size that we also created earlier. Then take the output nodes from both of these into a divide node and the divide node into a floor node, which will make sure that we will always have a full number with no decimals. The floor node will be connected into a multiply node and the B output from that will go into the collection parameter node as well. Let's move this over a bit. Then we want to duplicate the camera relative world position node we created earlier and connect the multiply to a subtract node and the B input will be the new camera relative world position node. And you can take the output from the subtract node into the output result that we have here. So with the material function done, we want to create a master material that can hold this function and be applied to all our other materials that we might want to use going forward. So we will start with creating a master material you can call it M underscore master for simplicity's sake. Double click that. And the first thing we want to do is to add a texture sample node and connect that into the base color of the master material. Because I've done this before, my TV texture that I will be using will be showing up here. Uh, but for you, it might be just a generic texture that Unreal takes from its databases. With that connected, you want to add now a texture object parameter node. Let's call this base color. Uh, this is what will show up in the material instances we create later. So call it something you will remember. And connect that to the text input of the sample node. With these two connected, we want to get the material function that we created earlier. So right click and search for call and you should find the material function call node and choose the MF vertex snap material function we created earlier. Then connect this into the world position offset of the master material. And that is pretty much everything we need to do uh, to create the master material that we will use for all our other materials. Uh, you should see some strange wobbliness of the uh, example material up to the left. Uh, if you do that, means you've done it right. Right, so after this, we will right click the master material and create a material instance. Uh, in my case, I'm using this for a TV set, so I will call this MITV. 
uh, double click the material instance and you will see the base color node that we created earlier. So you can check this, which means that you can now choose what texture you want the material instance to use. Uh, as I mentioned, since I've done this before, I already have the TV texture applied, but you will most likely have something else. So you can just press the drop down menu and search for your texture. Uh, then save and apply everything and close it down. And you should just be able to pull this out onto whatever assets you're using. And here we can see kind of how the vertex jitter effect will be working. Uh, it's uh, pretty high right now. So you can go into the material parameter collection we created earlier. And there you can see that you can change the default value to either up or down. Uh, setting it to two is uh, pretty high. What you should put here kind of depends on the overall style that you want or what you're looking for. In general, I would say that something around a default value of one, a little bit less, a little bit over, is probably a good uh, aim to have. I will be adding a few examples at the end to show uh, how it looks on different default values, but do play around a bit with it yourself and see whatever works best with your models and textures. Thank you for following along this tutorial. I really hope it helped out. And if you have any questions or if there is anything else you would like me to cover, please let me know in the comments and have a great day.